Do you believe you can fly? Well, I did get to go to Oshkosh. And there's something I learned there, and that is if you want to leave a lasting impression with people, show them how you can go home in one of these. That's the C5. That's pretty impressive. That is a big bird. The other way to impress them is show them how they can go home in one of these. This is the Merlin, and it's not such a big bird. But that's going to be the focus today. We're going to look at the Merlin. We're going to look at the Aero Marine Innovation Center. Let's get started. There's a lot to unwrap here. Well, the booth is hopping. Look at this. All kind of interest. People really, uh, they like it. They get it. They stand here for a minute and go, yeah. Between the price, the simplicity, the all metal construction, and of course the new engine. It's, it's the complete package. The only drawback being single seat, but we've talked about that. So if you can get past that point, uh, the Merlin might be the ticket for you. So we've got people from all over the world, literally. The guy there in the hat, which, does he look like he's from Australia? It's true. He says he came all the way from Australia to see the Merlin. Now, he's interested in the part 103, which is the little brother to the Merlin. Um, and some of that's for medical reason, medical licensing. But, uh, yep, people from all over. This guy wanted to get in and try it on for size. Looks like he fits. A lot of shoulder room. Well, certainly what drew a lot of attention at the booth was the new engine. And uh, we're all really excited about this. Four cycle, fuel injected, water cooled, electronic ignition. It takes a lot of the work out of what a pilot needs to do in the air. So we want to look at the guy who's developing this, bringing it along, Ben Bozma. So we're going to kind of kind of feature the developer of this engine, the refiner of this engine, Ben Bozma. And uh, he's done the work on this for Aero Marine. And uh, I got a question for you. Who do you think was his instructor pilot? Wilbur or Orville? Who sold me? Orville? Almost. <laughs> Who's the world's greatest glider pilot and seaplane pilot yeah. at the same time? Uh, one time landing. One time seaplane landing on the Hudson, right? Uh, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, he was my instructor. No wow. Uh, I was a uh, sophomore at the Air Force Academy. He was a senior. Well, Ben is an impressive guy. F-16 pilot test pilot. The amount of planes he's flown in the hours are, is quite impressive. He's also a flight program director. But he was invited to lead a forum there on this engine and on the Merlin. So let's drop in there. It's time for Ben to do his presentation. And in this case, an 800 CCV twin. And in this case, an 800 CCV twin for the Merlin that as it occurs to me, this engine is compatible with pretty much any aircraft that y'all have that either flew with a 582 or an HKS 447, any of the Rotax two strokes and that class because you're basically looking at a 100 pound, 60 horsepower platform here. And that's not done, like I say, we're not NASA, you know, we're, in fact, we're not even you know what's better than NASA, right? Elon Musk. He's not even doing it. <laughs> so, yeah, it's going to happen here, yes, sir. Because the Merlin has fuel flow sensors, it knows how much fuel it's burning, so what it does is it automatically balances the fuel no more than one liter per side. So, those six and a half gallons are, are, are staying out. But it's pretty cool, right, that, that a home-built aircraft has auto-balance. The first airplane that you can buy that has auto fuel balancing between wings is an SF-50 and they're $3.2 million, okay? That's a fact. 
So the Merlin will have that. It actually has auto fuel goblins. While Ben's doing the presentation, let's zip back over to the Aero Marine booth, which was right on the main thoroughfare. Let's see what's going on there. Yep, sure enough, Graham, our senior Goodwill Ambassador, is still teaching. Let me ask you a question. If you had the chance to go back and talk to Orville and Wilbur, would you? Would you want to? Would you ask them questions? Would you want to learn what they were doing? Would you want to think like they think? How about if you had the chance, would you go back to that garage where Hewlett and Packard started the HP Computer Company to see the innovation, to see how guys like this think, to see what's going on in their mind? I got another question for you. Do you just want to be an airplane owner or do you want to be part of a community that's using innovation to lower pilot workload to increase safety and fun? I do. So where are we doing all this R&D? We're doing this R&D in our state-of-the-art garage behind my house, which I'm not apologizing for that. Uh, I don't know how many of you guys have a state-of-the-art hangar for your aircraft build, but my garage is just fine. And, uh, and that's what we're doing. Uh, this is my uh, trusty assistant. Where? That's Don Kessler. He's uh, one of our cohorts. We have three or four people on this project where none of us are paid. We are doing this because we like building airplanes. He's an airplane builder himself. He's also an A-10 driver. If you don't know what that is, that's the Warthog. Uh, and he's a PhD double E, which is an oxymoron, right? Hog driver, PhD, doesn't fit. What this video was showing us is the first time he started it, you see the straps, and the straps have gone through the, the plywood and all that stuff right to the engine because then we have a prop on there, it's a three blade that we just guessed 17 degrees on, and we were able to get uh, 205 uh, pounds of thrust out of it at three bar of injector pressure. That surprisingly doesn't exist in the home built market. That is water cooling. Excuse me. Fuel injection, electronic uh, control units for the aircraft, and then, and then this is something that's really rare in the aviation community. And that's readily available parts, but you can find uh, uh, parts for this engine pretty much in every town, especially rural towns that have lots of agriculture going on. It's fairly low, uh, low cost. Uh, in fact, it's it's ridiculously low cost. Yeah, this is great. He fits perfectly well in a Merlin. Check that out. Okay, six foot five. And we had a guy in there today that was 300 pounds and he fit in a Merlin. Well, you may think that me comparing Aero Marine innovation to other pioneers of innovation is a little outlandish. But wait, let me show you what's going on here. There's a whole lot more than you may think is going on. So beyond the Merlin, there's also a lot of development going on. This is the D-Pod project, which is military funded and requested, but this is proving the advantage of having small battery powered propulsion in the wings. Now this isn't to replace the internal combustion engine right now, but is a huge safety addition in that on takeoff, if you have a problem, this will stay flat, level, and safe and give you the power to return to the airport uh, without 
having to do risky maneuvers. So these retract when not in use, but when they're in use, they add the propulsion to get you out of trouble, keep your wings level, and uh, get you back. And then in the military application, if you reverse those on landing, you make it a very short landing vehicle. So this is the future, not available right now, but it's the kind of innovation that Aero Marine's doing. Let's go in the booth, see some of the other projects. In fact, look at this one. This is amphibious and stole. It's a look into the future. Well, the innovation that goes on at Aero Marine not only benefits the general aviation public, but the military as well. And CHIP leads a team of aeronautical engineers, electrical engineers, people with their doctorates. How can they be a doctor and work on airplanes? You know what I mean. But they work on some high-level stuff for the Air Force and the Armed Forces. Here's a downed, downed soldier recovery. Here's in-flight refueling. New airplane to land on the water. The D-Pod project for the wings. It goes on and on. And I like that because it trickles down to the airplane that I want to buy and makes it better. The engineering's better, the design's better, the documentation's better. Here's kind of an advanced Merlin, not in production yet, but this idea was worked up for the Air Force Research Laboratory where they could, uh, in very short, take off and landing distance and transport cargo and transport an injured soldier. Aeromarine innovation, good for me and good for the government. Speaking of the E-Pod wing, look at this wing on the Merlin. This is beautiful. It's a cantilever wing, has no strut underneath like a Cessna that gets in your way or blocks your view. Beautiful cantilever wing. Well, let's go back over to the building where Ben did the presentation. It was very popular. A lot of guys gathered around afterwards with technical question. Ben is the guy to answer these questions. He's one of the innovators. What a great opportunity. What he's explaining here is an additional electric motor which almost doubles the horsepower. It's in place of the top pulley on the reduction drive. Not in production yet, but this is the future and another example of innovation. Fire the injector. So it does do advancement. It does all day. In fact, no single cold start, hot start, it'll always start because it's got an ECU. If you've got a Continental in your airplane like I do, you have to be a magician to start it hot and, and lucky and everything else, right? So Some of those have three sticks too, you know. Everybody that gets in this loves it. Tall people, short people, chubby people. This guy's exploring the flap extension handle, which is all mechanical. Look at these big flaps. I like big flaps and I cannot lie. So we're here talking about guys that can get in and uh, they're surprised at how much room. How about shoulder width? See? There you go. Nice. Well, the shadows are getting long at Oshkosh. And we had a lot of people come through here today. A lot of excitement. Uh, people are amazed at the price, the kit concept. They're loving the new engine. Four cycle, water cooled, fuel injected, electronic ignition, 2.8 gallon per hour. Everything that they're looking for, for some of them. And it's got about four hours of endurance. So you can go cross country in it. Well, there you go. If you didn't get to go to Oshkosh, I'm going to do another video with other interesting airplanes. But this one, of course, focused on Aeromarine, the innovation that's going on the opportunity you have to be in the beginning group that sees, recognizes, and adopts 
what's happening here. Go to aeromarinelsa.com. With the help of Aeromarine, absolutely believe you can fly.